Guten Tag, BJ. What brings you to the Raven's Nest? I hope it involves killing huge amounts of Nazis. Last time we saw old William J. Blaskowitz, he was in the care of Grey Matter Studios and returned to Castle Wolfenstein, the high watermark for simulated Nazi killing. Which is an even more surprising feat after I played the games from Grey Matter, originally Zatrix Entertainment, those being Quake Mission Packs, Redneck Rampage, and some people's, for some reason, favorite game, Kingpin Life of Crime. A game I don't jive with, and I didn't even play the remaster. Wait, so you're telling me that Slipgate Ironworks released a thing in a bad state and people didn't like it? No. Mein Gott. Kill surprise! Civvy, be nicer to Slipgate Ironworks. No! They've been doing this for more than a decade. I bet Embracer Group gutting the company will surely right the ship. Who could have foreseen Embracer Group doing this after gobbling up so many studios? I thought they were saving all of my favorite intellectual properties. So the Wolfenstein IP in 2001 was in the hands of Grey Matter Studios, who, due to how successful Return to Castle Wolfenstein was, got bought out by Activision. That's right, after finally developing an awesome game that didn't make me want to tear my hair out and complete my transformation into embarrassing self-parody, Activision acquired Grey Matter, and then they developed Call of Duty United Offensive, after which they were folded into Treyarch and sent to, you guessed it, the Call of Duty Mines. A dark and terrible place, where all but the luckiest and most profitable studios go after being snatched up by the ever-gluttonous Activision Blizzard. A place from which there may be no escape, even after the sadly exorcism-free exit of Bobby Kotick. Just like Raven Software, who would be given the task of making the next Wolfenstein game eight years later, simply called Wolfenstein, because that's what they started doing for a while. I don't know why. They did it with Wolfenstein and Doom and Halloween. But I can hear you saying, the original game was called Castle Wolfenstein. And technically no other game was called just Wolfenstein. And this one, this game doesn't even have the Castle Wolfenstein in it. So it has the least fucking business calling itself that out of any of the games. They did it to Commander Keen too. And just like that Commander Keen reboot, they memory hold this Wolfenstein game, and we don't know why. It might be because id Software, who owned Wolfenstein, was bought out by ZeniMax before the game released, and they don't like Activision, which I can understand. But ZeniMax and Bethesda routinely publish worse games than Wolfenstein 2009. Like Starfield. You think I'm reinstalling that 100 plus gigabyte sleep aid so I can get footage for it? Fuck no. Ugh. I think Starfield is worse than Fallout 76 because at least Fallout 76 has good reasons to be shit. Singularity was the last Raven game before they were sent to the mines, but Wolfenstein might have been more responsible for it. It didn't sell well, it didn't review particularly well, probably because they made a Wolfenstein game more like Call of Duty and less like Wolfenstein, and I, uh, I'm gonna be honest, kids. I wasn't kind to this game either when it came out. I pirated it, played through it once, got pissed off that it was more of an amalgamation of late 2000s gaming trends than a proper Wolfenstein game, and didn't think about it again until people asked me to play it, somehow still remembering that it exists. So I pirated another copy because you won't sell me a copy of this game anymore. You think I'm gonna pick up a used PC retail copy of this and introduce my modern, bespoke personal computer to ancient Securom bullshit? No. If you want me to buy the game, sell me the game. Otherwise, I yo-ho-ho it with a bottle of go fuck yourselves. And after all of this, I can honestly say that this game is a lot better than I remember it being. The game opens with a cutscene where we see BJ Blaskowitz, and we're gonna say that this takes place after Return to Castle Wolfenstein because the Wolfenstein timeline is a goddamn disaster. This game is a reboot timeline that doesn't follow Return to Castle Wolfenstein, which was a reboot timeline that didn't follow the original games, which were a reboot of Castle Wolfenstein, and the only Wolfenstein games that are actually related to each other are RTCW and Enemy Territory, and then the Machine Games ones over here doing their own thing. I'm not including Youngblood because I haven't played that game because it looks like dog shit. There's a bit of foreshadowing here when BJ hides behind this metal door that isn't pierced by fire from an anti-aircraft turret. Anti-aircraft turrets in this game suck. Surrender! You 
will not escape that easily. BJ is cornered by all the Nazis, and when they try to shoot him, he pulls this medallion from the coat of an officer he killed off screen. Because even when we're not playing, BJ Blaskowitz is killing Nazis. It's a pop! <laughs> And this is all stuff you can do later in this game, which is nice. Thanks, Raven, for not lying to me. I can see why this game lost money. Look at this cutscene. Look at how pretty this is in its then console standard 720p resolution. OSA headquarters. This is Agent BJ Blaskowitz. Wake up the director. Tell him we have to meet as soon as I land. I think this is the first time we've ever heard BJ really speak, apart from the word, yeah. Yeah! He's voiced by Peter Jessup, who you may remember from all of these things because he's a voice actor and they really get around. After this, we get an in-engine cutscene where everything looks different. This is an enhanced version of id Tech 4, the engine used for Doom 3, Quake 4, and Prey. I'll tell you what, this is a sequel to Return to Castle Wolfenstein because the in-engine cutscenes are boring as shit. The medallion's a symbol that was used by an obscure clan of mystics. They worship something called the Black Sun. Who they were was lost centuries ago when the group was killed in a cataclysmic event. Then, just a few decades ago, the symbol was adopted by the Thule Society, a German occult group that has a number of high-ranking Nazis among its members. That's basically all you need to know. This ain't Disco Elysium. There's plenty of characters and voice acting and such, but they're not in this game to do much more than provide the vibes you get from having people who have spoken lines. Another game, another train ride, this time into Eisenstadt, where the majority of this game takes place. We'll get to how that works in a bit after this game makes the absolute worst introduction it can muster for a Wolfenstein game, and probably why I remember it leaving such a sour taste in my mouth before. You know, old Civvy, who hates those military shooters from the 2000s because they made FPS games slow, boring, shitty, but it's mostly that they were slow, plodding, overly linear frat boy douchebag shooters. But they were the style at the time, and so Wolfenstein had to make some concessions. We got checkpoint saves too, although there is a way to reactivate quick saves in the console. But I didn't do that. I'd rather play the game on the game's terms. Also, it can break some scripted events. We're about to be attacked by Nazis because my cover was already blown, but you can see the problems already. The narrow FOV, the sickening head bob while sprinting, the fact that you sprint slower than most humans despite carrying no weapons right now, the over-explaining of how the game works. Quickly, down here! We have Chrysler agents waiting on the other side. Oh, Jesus Christ, already? I haven't even left the train station yet. You know what? It's a new year. I think some things need to be updated. Katie, roll it out. The old one wouldn't go over 256. I don't know why. At least this sewer's really pretty, putting that updated Doom 3 engine to work. Agent Blaskowitz. Hold on, there's something shiny I'm over here. Angle. I work with the Chrysler Circle. Listen, we don't have long. There are Nazis fanning out through the station. Somehow they know about you. Yeah, because as established in the opening cutscene, I'm the best Nazi killer who ever lived. The baddest of bad motherfuckers. Credit to Raven for not wasting too much of my time in this Wolfenstein game not killing Nazis. Take come on! Move up! If you squint, you can see the dumb military shooter bullshit I was talking about. It's especially dumb because these Nazis are all speaking English with terrible accents. Like everyone in this game. But they have to speak English because that's how you know what they're gonna do. Shut See? He throws a grenade, you get an on-screen prompt for the grenade. You can toss the grenade back or run, and I usually run. This isn't a game made for running, so that's on me. This is the level where Raven quickly gives you all the combat basics you'll need to know for the rest of the game. Run slow. Walk slower. Basic Nazis go down quick and the feedback, character animations, and physics all work together really well. This does, after all, have AAA production value, and it's made by Raven, who, as we've established many times, are quite good at this. Like, there's even little animation when planting this dynamite to blow open a door. Because this is a more modern shooter, the Nazis are pretty grenade-happy if you're standing still but also, you move slowly. I picked up the Car 98 and panicked when I first played this because it said, press Q to switch weapons. And if Wolfenstein was gonna limit me to two weapons, I was gonna limit its presence on my hard drive to the recycle bin. And no, that's not the case. You can carry all the game's weapons at one time, and Q can swap between your last two selected. It's console stuff, 
made for people using a controller. Also console stuff, the dreaded regenerating health. The cursed, your screen has some blood on it and turns red until you hide for a few seconds mechanic that I'd trade for a good old percentage any day of the week. At least give me a fucking bar to indicate where my health is on the HUD, but no, you'll only have the vaguest sense of your health for the rest of this game. Which is, and will always be, dumb bullshit. For those of you in the audience who prefer this mechanic, here you go. <laughs> Fuck you. The guns, though. These are not Call of Duty guns. These are not modern military shooter guns. These are Raven guns. These are Wolfenstein guns. <laughs> There's a tendency in games where you can upgrade your weapons to make the basic stock non-upgraded version of the weapon absolutely fucking useless, and you will be upgrading guns later with the gold you're collecting, or if you find all the intel and tomes of power, the game will give them to you for free. Yes? Tomes of power? I see you, Raven, and I sorely miss you. Right now, I would call this game a mixed bag. We've got some of the more atrocious ideas that made their way into FPS games in the 2000s. A lot of this environment is pretty lacking in color, and so are the enemies, so it's tough to pick them out from the background, no matter how well everything is designed. While Eric is yelling at me to take out a machine gun nest, I'm busy shooting Nazis. But guess what? This is a game from the 2000s, and we need a turret section. Now, the mouse aiming in this game is a bit weird, and I was able to deal with it fine except on turrets. This one, and the anti-aircraft guns later, suck shit and I hate them. There's a point later where I have to jump between two machine gun turrets and the entire battle would be more fun if someone was rewiring my nervous system to automatically respond to bad puns. And someone was! Like, I can't turn this thing all the way to the left, so I have to move to the one on the left and it can turn that way, so... That was close. Fuck you. Please remain still until the procedure is complete. Is this just to save you some work later? I do not mind the work. Work is good. Work builds character. Okay, who programmed that bullshit into you? No one did. It is a remnant from your brain that I carry with me. I would prefer it wasn't there. Yeah, well, I got it from living in a dystopian nightmare society, and look at me. I turned out all right, didn't I? Please remain still until the procedure is complete. So then, as I'm regretting picking up this game again because I really don't enjoy modern military shooters if you couldn't tell, Raven pulls the rug out from under me. You see, there was that magical weird Thule stuff from earlier, right? And now there's this weird magical Thule stuff. Wolfenstein games often fall on a scale between science fiction bullshit and supernatural bullshit. As we saw in Return to Castle Wolfenstein, that game was pretty far over on this end, Undead King of Francia notwithstanding, whereas something like Spear of Destiny, where you fight the Angel of Death, is way over on the other side. This game isn't quite in the center because I think it leans a little more supernatural. This is floaty Thule dimension shit. It's not even actually a power you get, it's like... You see what's happening here, right? So we casually walk out of this burning train station after getting ambushed by the Nazis. Who knew we were coming? Because there's a mole in the organization. So there we go. Game mechanics taught, introductory level over. So now it's time for... Open world? It's not exactly an open world. It's more like a very large hub. Sure, it's got gold and intel and tomes of power, but traversing it and the second section of the city that appears somewhat briefly towards the end of the game is mostly to put you up against random encounters with Nazis and give you something to do between missions. It's not anything to write home about. It's fine, even if it doesn't always feel necessary. There are really only three places you'll want to go. The Black Market, which is conspicuously marked with a red skull with a knife through it. The Black Market is run by these greasy motherfuckers, Anton and Stefan Krieg, brothers and, uh... They share a passion for one thing. Money. Uh-huh. We're not criminals. Just businessmen. Yeah. And since the Nazis came, <laughs> business is good. We make a killing on food and medicine alone. <laughs> I... I hope this war never ends. 
Right, so Anton and Stefan are war profiteers, definitely not criminals. So after a visit there, you go to the Kreisau Circle safe house, which is conspicuously marked with a K on the door. This is Carolyn Becker, who's gonna help me go on my first mission. If it's true your target is General Zeta, we last spotted him at an archaeological dig just outside of town. If the Nazis knew you were coming to the train station, then we have a mole. Watch your back, American. Try not to get Follow lost. me, Agent Blaskowitz. I'll take you to a truck to set it to the dig site. The other place you can go is the Golden Dawn safe house, but we're not there yet. The game holds your hand on this first assignment because it thinks you might not be able to navigate around town properly. The game is correct, although you get a decent enough map to use. Quiet. There's a patrol coming this way. Yeah, well, I don't have any quiet weapons yet, and this ain't a stealth game. I get to a checkpoint while I'm roaming the city looking for gold. There are checkpoints inside a lot of buildings. And I figure it's a perfect time to go online and look for an FOV fix. This one actually comes with a fix for the head bobbing during sprinting so I don't puke all over my keyboard. The fix even calls the head bobbing vomit inducing. So I'm wondering how it made it all the way to gold. Let's get ourselves to the objective, the dig site. So you want to go to the dig site, eh? I'm sorry, but you shouldn't point a gun at someone like that. Why is his blood hazy? Please, get me out of here. The Nazis are going to kill me. How do you know I'm not a Nazi? You're BJ Blaskowitz. I know all about you and your mission. I don't think we can call BJ a spy anymore. Everyone seems to know who he is and what he's doing. My name is Sergei Kovlo of the Golden Dawn. We are a group of scholars who study the occult. Sergei tells me where the Thule Medallion is, but since he got tortured, he also tells the Nazis where the Thule Medallion is, so that's where I can find more Nazis to kill. Not that it matters, when you leave the open world parts of this game, the levels are linear. I think this right here is where the Car 98 won me over. A damn fine animation, Raven. I expected nothing less from you. Not just the death animation, but the weapon animation and the punchy sound design for it. So here's where we get the Thule Medallion and the first of our four powers. The things that separate this game not just from other Wolfenstein games, but from the kind of Call of Duty bullshit that I imagine Activision producers wanted. Now I can use the Veil, which gives me a few nice abilities. The first is being able to walk through certain walls. The second is being able to move faster than normal, which is, by far, my favorite part. And the third is that it highlights enemies, barrels, and some of the locations of Tomes of Power. You guys remember how in the 2000s, as graphics were improving, and those brown and piss filters started gaining prominence? Well, this game, as I mentioned before, even with its good art design, is still a victim of it. So Raven gives you a power-up to mitigate that by highlighting enemies in the environment. Sure, there's a different kind of monochrome now, but you can see. There's even weird little veil creatures that act as environmental hazards to encourage you to use it. Okay, fair enough. You might be thinking that the basic Nazis are really weak and easy to kill, and they sure are, which is why the game starts bringing in things like scribes, who are Nazi wizards. They're kind of like a preview of the powers you'll have later, because they can move really fast and shield enemies. We can't shoot through their shields yet, and you need to use veil powers to keep track of them when they're moving around. All in all, form and function, good design, I can't complain. I think that this game, like a lot of games, got scaled down from what was originally intended because you get another veil power in this level called Meyer. Meyer is, for all intents and purposes, bullet time. It slows everything but you and other magic wielders. It also sends out a deadly shockwave. So the intro was showing you both the Meyer and shield powers, though they're a little flashier there. And your superpowers are all color-coded, the veil being green, Meyer being yellow, shield being blue, and empower being red. They're all conveniently bound to the number keys one through four, with the rest of your weapons being weirdly shoehorned in above those because this is a console game. I don't have much else to say about this level, so here's a clip of the car 98 being awesome even before getting a single upgrade. I might do another playthrough of this game where I actually try to find more intel and tomes since they give you upgrades. However, finishing the dig site level and seeing a bunch of upgrades get unlocked for weapons I don't have yet is a nice little shot of dopamine. Like, see that? Scope for the car 98? You bet your ass I want one of those. 
At some point during the last mission, I also picked up the MP43. It's not quite as good as the FG42 in RTCW, but it serves the same function while being upgradable and spinning a lot more lead. Now, because this is an open world, you can't see the quotation marks I'm using in the script as I write it. The Nazis will continue to send squads out into the streets after you clear them, and throughout the game they get nastier. Right now it's just the basic troops and sometimes scribes. There isn't a lot to do in this open world besides looking for intel, tomes, and gold. The new powers allow you to traverse it more efficiently thanks to the veil walls and veil ladders that might let you flank some of the Nazis, but I rarely use those advantages since this game isn't particularly difficult. Like you're encouraged to travel through the sewers. But that's for people who don't want to kill as many Nazis as possible. We recently appropriated a box of crystals the Nazis had been shipping. I have no idea what they do, but we'd be happy to sell them to you. Wow, thanks. You have no idea of their value or use, but you're gonna charge me for them anyway. That's really cool. You are so going to hell. First order of business is a sniper scope for the Car 98, upgrading Meyer, and what the hell, let's upgrade the damage on the MP43. I'm feeling generous. I'd love the tactical scope, but I have to finish the cannery mission first, which is gonna be a while. I like that the game tells me when I'll unlock this, but I hate that the game arbitrarily keeps it from me. Or rather, I hate that the Shamir brothers over here are keeping it from me. You're lucky the brothers won't let me turn you in for that reward, Blaskowitz. Bitch, I blow up half the buildings I go into. I killed more Nazis than the Tommy gun. You rat on me, you're gonna be a grease fire nobody remembers. I swear. When is the Kreis aus Circle's next attack? Right now, I bitch! I don't know anyone! In the city, I stumble upon a wounded soldier being attacked by a bunch of Nazis. I can't go on with my mission, so I need your help. Uh-huh. You'll need to go to the warehouse and steal a code book before it's moved to a new location. Uh, that doesn't sound too hard. And it's not. There isn't much to say about this mission, although it does help me show off two things I wanted to get into this video. The first is the absolutely savage death animation for when you shoot a Nazi in the throat. You're Incredible. Oh look, two in a row! Exsanguination twinsies! And the other is one of the melee weapons you can pick up and use temporarily, either by swinging or throwing. It's not as bloody as I'd hoped. I've got two main quest givers throughout the game, the Kreisau Circle and the Golden Dawn. There are ten main missions and five side missions. You bet your ass I did every single one. The Kreisau Circle says I'm needed at the church, and on the way it plays the most unnecessary cutscene ever put into a video game. I think it's nighttime now, meaning we've spent a whole day in Eisenstadt. And what this game, and I guess to a certain extent what Quake 4 also did with this engine, which was five years old by the time of this game's release, is real impressive. Raven saw the bombed out city from RTCW and said, we can do better, but we still have to make it really linear. When I was trying to remember what this game was like after only playing it once almost 15 years ago, what I saw in my head was this level and these bombed out buildings. It looks spectacular. The level of detail, the fire and smoke on the horizon, every individual little brick and piece of plank sticking out from the destroyed buildings, the true sense of a bigger world surrounding this linear path through the area. To get to the church, you need to clear a couple of machine gun nests and then deal with a heavy trooper. This game's version of the Super Soldat. Except it's way easier because, hey, guess what? The mid-2000s is calling. Ahoy hoy! What's that? The Super Soldier has really obvious weak points that I can shoot to take it down so it actually takes less effort than killing one of the scribes? Wow, that's a little sad. I almost feel bad for them. The heavy troopers drop their weapon, the particle cannon, which is an absolute beast of a gun. It's so powerful, I'm shocked they give it to you this early. It turns out that this entire mission was about shooting weak points. When I get to the church, I have to shoot a machine to stop it from doing bad Black Sun stuff. And you know what? When I'm done, it still does bad Black Sun stuff. Hey, I 
remember you from the promotional material. One of the Nazis that surrounded me becomes what the game calls a despoiled, which is a fancy way of saying magic Nazi zombie. This motherfucker made it onto the box! I personally think you should have gone with the Elite Guards. Maybe the game would have sold better. We have come to Eisenstadt because the Nazis have unearthed the Noxon crystals. They tamper with powers they do not understand. Well, of course they do. They're the Nazis. Same old story. Since you're obviously a skilled fighter, I would ask your help. A group of our brethren recently attempted a reconnaissance mission and were never heard from again. But an operative of ours just uncovered information as to what happened to them. Meet him at a tavern called the Raven's Nest. Oh, yeah. Of course it's called the Raven's Nest. Where is he? Which of you swine would dare touch a Nazi soldier? <laughs> Guten Tag! Oh my god, it's Hans Gross! Guten Tag! I remembered he was in this game because of a thing we'll see much later. He's a douche. <laughs> They won't let me kill him now, even though I could absolutely just shoot him. Not killing him now is actually a horrible mistake. You can talk to most of these bar patrons. Get your filthy hands off me. I'm drinking- Have you noticed? There's something wrong with General Zeta. He talks as if there were invisible people standing around him. Oh, right, that guy. We have to deal with that guy at some point. I think that's also in the cannery. A few days ago, we sent two members of the Golden Dawn to look into some strange rumors about a nearby farm. This morning, one returned, severely wounded. Would you be willing to go to the farm and see what happened to the other member of the Golden Dawn? Yeah, sure, I'm happy to get out of the city for a while. The locals are getting pretty hostile. The farm is a nice change of scenery until you find the giant underground base hiding beneath it. This battle inside the farmhouse is Nazis swarm as soon as you attack it, Pretty good. We saved Kurt Vonnegut down here, that's weird. It's a very pretty underground base, and the design of it from a gameplay perspective is fine. Nothing special. Huh. Oh, yeah, you also get the Panzer Shrek here, which is also fairly stock in terms of World War II guns. Though I wish I'd put more upgrades into it late game. It's kind of hard to get excited for a rocket launcher when you have a particle cannon that disintegrates enemies. You grab the blue crystal here, which gives you the shield power, and the game has a habit of just letting you go nuts with power-ups when you first get them, not even draining your energy bar while you're using them. At the end of the level, anything stock or boring that happened up to this point goes out the window. Because the Nazis are dumb, they're doing experiments to make weird creatures that I obviously release so they can turn on their masters, because that's what I do. The Nazis fuck around, and I am an agent of finding out. Good job, Raven. That right there is an A-plus set piece. And it looks like these Nazis bought the farm. Pun detection system successful. Fuck! I continue to do Golden Dawn missions for a while. The constantly respawning Nazis in town become kind of annoying rather than any kind of challenge. I'm sent to the hospital. Greetings, sir. How can I help you? The name's Blaskowitz. I was beginning to think you'd never make it. Does everyone know who I am? 
BJ, listen, you're an excellent Nazi killer, but a terrible spy. We're talking Archer levels of incompetence when it comes to not blowing your- Oh, I think I know what's wrong here. That creature stalking the hospital was created by the Nazis. They're making- <laughs> Making what? Is this more weird occult shit? This game, man. I swear the Nazis are doing new weird shit in every mission. Alright, let's deal with this thing. <laughs> oh, you wanna play it like that? Well, I don't have any melee weapons right now. <laughs> Overall, second coolest hospital level in a Wolfenstein game. I like the one in New Order better. That's not to say the level doesn't end with something interesting, because it does, of course it does, because we get another boss fight. This one is introduced by a Nazi who speed runs fuck around and find out. Every test subject that passes through the portal still returns to us altered. My god, it's the spy! You must protect me! Nein, Herr Doctor. You will be the one who protects me! No, oh, you will witness just how powerful the Nazi army is destined The Big Ugly Mutant isn't much of a fight, though. You have to get him to run into the portal's support pillars, and then both of us get sucked into the Black Sun dimension, and the mutant gets sucked into the Black Sun, and I grab the Empower Crystal, completing my collection and aligning my chakras. I also have a Tesla gun, but I don't use it very much. It's not that interesting and... <laughs> Okay, you know what? Forget what I said. All the weapons in this game are bangers. The Empower Crystal is basically a fuck your shields button, an incredibly cathartic power-up that I really like. Back in town, I have my first encounter with the new Elite Guards. Sorry, ladies. I grab some more upgrades and then head to another side mission at SS Headquarters to free an agent who's been- Wait a minute, that's fucking Kurt Vonnegut again. He got captured twice? Actually, no. Counting Dresden, he got captured three times. All I'm saying is the token only got captured once. The SS in this game are bastards. I mean, they were bastards in real life, too. But in this game, they carry the MP43, and that thing chews through your health really quickly. Kind of like the SS in the original Wolfenstein 3D. Except I don't know how much fucking health I have in this game! The hostages aren't even here. I have to follow the trail to a garment factory, which got taken over by the SS Paranormal Division. That's where I find the really weird ritualistic shit. Here's a fun thing with the checkpoint system. Jesus, there's a lot of guys in this factory. And now with the elite guards who, like, I'd still hit it, even though they're... You know what? Never mind. With that side mission done, I move on to another one. Sort of a continuation of the one where I stole a code book. Now I have to go to an officer's house to grab a code wheel that'll decipher the code book. Which is fine and cool and all, but this mission is mostly noteworthy for this. That man is some parts from the device you destroyed to an abandoned cannery in Eisenstadt. I need you to do some reconnaissance there. That's all, BJ. Reconnaissance? I'm sorry, I think I heard you wrong. There's a lot of gunfire going on in this shooting war we're currently in. 
the cannery, which we enter through the sewer. Yeah, real nice sewer basement thing. And oh fuck, surprise, Slavic Lurper! That's okay, I'll take that. This is the Flamin' Werfer. It's, uh... Oh, it's magnificent. It limits your movement a bit, but so does everything in this goddamn era of FPS games. You know what? A lot of this is a sewer level, and this flamethrower makes up for it. This game has a killer arsenal. It seems like they're making some kind of jetpack here, and the biggest of turrets that I absolutely get to use as soon as I clear out the control room. I don't know why this big turret is necessary. We get a handheld version later. General Zeta, who's been this game's main antagonist up to this point, is here. Finally, I get to meet the man who has caused us so much trouble. But I'll put a stop to that now. Like hell you will. I'm glad BJ immediately tried the practical approach. The answer, however, is the same approach with one extra step. Oh yeah, he's a weird black sun monster now. What's this shockwave jumping bullshit? This isn't a movement game, Raven. That's why we're so slow. I gotta destroy his machines and then liquefy his face with bullets, and there you go. The main villain of the game is now dead. Because if you're a Nazi who stays in a room for too long with B.J. Blaskowitz, you die. There's only one Wolfenstein villain that I can remember who knew this, which was old Death's head from the last game. The Nazis are retaliating for the death of General Zeta by attacking this section of Eisenstadt. We must move downtown. Take the sewers northwest. Then once you're downtown, travel along the waterways. The Nazis shouldn't see you there. I'm hearing a lot about traveling through waterways that are still totally sewers. Listen, I understand why we have to go downtown, you know, to another hub area. One that's a bit smaller and more contained and only has like one side mission in it. We'll get to that. Because first... BJ, if we could really use your help. What? But I just came from the other safe house. BJ, Caroline has been taken prisoner by the Nazis. It's been ten minutes! It's time for a big cool castle mission. You can't have a Wolfenstein game without a castle mission. Break into castle, grab the Lycanfost 44, a portable version of the giant cannon I was using before, which has the anti-gravity ammo we set off in the train station like six hours ago. We used that for opening portcullises. Portcullises? Portcullai? It doesn't matter because we also used it to kill big Nazi mutant Thule Black Sun. Okay, I'm having to use a lot of adjectives to describe these things, so this game needs to stop introducing new weird shit into the mix every level. Good thing you get this weapon, too, because the gloves are now off. If you're not using your big guns where you need to, you're gonna get killed quick. That's not to say that the game is getting difficult, more that it's forcing you into a certain style of play I like to call nuking the enemy from orbit. We get onto the roof of the castle and... Death's head. Oh my god, it hasn't even been a day and they sent him here to replace Zeta. Agent Blaskowitz. When I heard the reports you were in town, I could not believe my good fortune. Again, terrible spy. Finally, I can have my revenge. You're forgetting. I'm the one with the gun. Shut that thing down. You're not the one giving orders here. Drop your weapon, Agent Blaskowitz. No, BJ! Don't! And that is why the Third Reich will triumph, Blaskowitz. We are willing to risk everything to win. Any had thought this device would tear the barrier between our dimension and the Black Sun. But we persevered and now possess an inexhaustible source of power. Wait, no, stop, hold on a minute. You're doing the Argent Energy Plan? You're stealing energy from a hell dimension? Oh, okay, sure. 
I thought you were smarter than this, Wilhelm. The Nazi war machine will conquer the world. Oh, I tire of his continued existence, Hans. Shoot him! Oh, hey, Caroline. I'm glad you got to do something. Though I don't believe for a second you overpowered the guy who is, spoiler alert, the final boss of this game. Nine. Nine. What? What the fuck is even happening in this game anymore? This is the Geist Queen. I hate her. Her boss fight is mostly a turret section, and she doesn't even have the goddamn common courtesy to kill Hans and Death's head. Carolyn is dead, though. Until the next game, where she's not dead and a completely different character. Because the Quake series continuity was way too tight and easy to understand. Really, Tim? Bringing back the Strog? She has four phases here because you have four anti-aircraft guns and she's got four egg sacs. And between phases, you have to shoot her kids and, uh, it all looks very nice and is functional, but it's still a goddamn turret section. I get sucked in and spit out of the entrance to the castle, so I'll just take the L from not saving Caroline and... Okay, you know what? That got me. That was good. Good job, Raven. She's got weak points too, but I don't need Veil Vision to tell where they are. You know, even though this open world game is short, and I mean short like it takes 8 to 10 hours to beat, I'd pay 70 bucks for this. Look at the care they put into that death. The last of the side missions is shoehorned in here so badly that you can't even miss it. I talked a little about protecting this asshole before while he bombs the radio tower, but the whole thing is that there are four radio towers, right? And this guy blows up one of them. I have to find two more around town and then one more at the final secondary location, the radio station, which throws everything it can at me. On the roof, I have to blow up a radio tower with an anti-aircraft gun. And you'd think that I'd want to use the anti-aircraft gun to take out the jetpack soldiers, but you'd be wrong. They're weak as shit, at least on this, the normal skill, and using the MP43 works way better. And the anti-aircraft guns aim terribly. I wish I could show you how many times I'm dragging my mouse across the desk to get it to turn, but it's so bad that you can kind of tell, can't you? Well, the radio station blows up real good and I leave. I go to the Kreisau safe house to find out what they want me to do. They tell me to go find Eric Engel, who's probably been fucking kidnapped like Caroline was, or like the Golden Dawn guys. Well, I'm half right, because he's at the Golden Dawn safe house, which means my two main quest givers are now in one place. Did you hear that one of the Black Market brothers was found dead? Shot to death in a drainage ditch. Okay, good, so this day isn't a total loss. Which one? Anton, the younger one. You could see this coming a mile away. So many people hate these two. So I don't have the exact footage to back this up, but the wiki tells me that Anton was shot by his brother because he was working with the Nazis. So there is a level of grease that at least one of the Krieg brothers will not sink to. BJ, we're hearing that Death's Head is demanding revenge for our attack, and has moved to the Zeppelin. Just recently, we have detected a massive surge of Veil energy coming from the Zeppelin. We think they're preparing to fire some type of Black Sun-powered weapon. So. We need you to get aboard the Zeppelin and stop Death's Head. We can sneak you onto the airfield, but you'll have to get the rest of the way yourself. Okay, let's go. Not like I've got any more side quests to do. The Nazis are so desperate to keep me out of that airfield, they put a tank in my path. Oh, wait a sec. I didn't even realize I'd cooked her before I started hitting her with the flamethrower. I'd say this is delivery on the promise of this bit in the intro cutscene. I'm a 
death machine. You could say that I am death incarnate. I wouldn't say that, but it could be said. Only thing that stops me is being next to a burning truck at the wrong time. And maybe a couple of rocket jockeys, because they move really fast and there's so many goddamn explosions and smoke effects happening that I get confused. <laughs> this machine protects me from your bullets, American. Uh-huh. Right. But the machines that power that machine are not bulletproof, right? How dare you destroy my pets? Now I Man, she's like the hottest one I've seen. Why she gotta be a fucking Nazi? After fighting through the hangar, we dock a smaller airship onto the larger airship, kill heaps of Nazis, use anti-aircraft guns to shoot down the engines, but not the rocket troopers. What the fuck? Jesus Christ, slow down! I have much to thank you for, Herr Doctor. Without you, we never would have known where to excavate for the portal. My information is always correct. Did I not tell you the American would be at the train station? And where you could trap Caroline Becker? Oh, it was that guy. Well, I guess he's a Nazi. Blaskowitz kept everyone so focused on his antics. No one had time to think of much else. The Golden Dawn has no idea I work with you. You work for me, Doctor. Not with me. Kudos to Death's Head for continuing to be the only intimidating villain in this series. As you wish. But please, let us pass through into the Black Sun Dimension. I wish to see it and be redeemed after a lifetime of ridicule. I'm sorry, Doctor, but you're taking a different journey. Auf Wiedersehen. <laughs> What you get for being a dumb Nazi. So I have to follow these two into the Black Sun dimension, and I wish I had more footage of it, but my gameplay got corrupted. Beautiful, isn't it? Such raw, unbridled power. It destroyed the soul civilization. But where they failed, we will succeed. I take it back, Death's Head's an idiot, and he clearly hasn't been paying attention. I'm not even doing the countdown because this game doesn't let me kill him. I tried. Like, really hard. Look, after the boss fight, I get to see him running away and I hit him with the particle cannon, which should kill him, but no, he disappears into a puff of green smoke to become a problem later. You could have killed him in this game, Raven. You killed Caroline, and she comes back again in the next game, too. Nothing matters. We do still have to fight a super-powered Hans Gross. I'll be the Zen, Blaskowitz. Guten Tag, Blaskowitz! You fucking shitheel, you just said goodbye in the cutscene and hello in the gameplay. And you did it for the memes! My medallion is just as powerful as yours! Oh great, his Schwartz is as big as mine. I don't really like this boss fight very much. It's kind of a rock-paper-scissors power battle. Like, the first part of it is hiding behind moving pillars and using him power to break through his shield ability. Then the second phase is using Meyer to slow him down so you can actually hit him in the middle of all these moving gears. Like, I'm at a fucking clock tower level. And then the third phase is him trying to run, get knocked off a cliff... <laughs> And then the son of a bitch comes back again, and I have to hose him down with veil energy, and he dies. Not only do I get to skip all of the times I died in the corrupted footage, but the footage I took to replace the corrupted footage is completely fucked. You can see it, right? Like my PC got sucked into the fucking Black Sun dimension. So I win, and the cutscene shows me bitch slapping a Nazi and taking his parachute to see the Zeppelin I'm on crash into that castle we raided earlier in the game. Pretty good. A huge step up from the cutscenes in Return to Castle Wolfenstein. Unfortunately, the medallion shorts out now that there are reasons, very scientific ones, and the game ends on BJ sending a telegram back to the OSA. Director, the mission was accomplished. General Zeta is dead and his research has been destroyed. The Thule portal and the Doomsday weapon were smashed along with the Zeppelin. 
so all access to the Black Sun has been permanently cut off. As to Death's Head, I'd like to think he died in the crash. But somehow I get the feeling we haven't seen the last of him. And how? Man, does he come back! Not the same character, mind you. He gets a little less cartoonish and more evil and I think way older, even in the 1940s sections of the New Order. But that's a discussion for another time. I feel like I unearthed a precious artifact by digging this game up again. This was way more fun than I remember it, despite being handicapped by the time and era it was created. Really goes to show that if you give a job to Raven, they'll do it. And now that we've seen some shakeups over at Activision, maybe we can get them out of the COD mines. I really wish having Microsoft buy the company wasn't the solution to that problem. Fuck off.